Welcome to Weight Loss Practice Builder, the podcast created for busy weight loss practitioners and their teams who want to systematize, simplify, and accelerate the growth of their new or existing weight loss practice. I'm your host, Carol Clark, owner of Weight Loss Practice Builder, and I love all things growing practices and helping to manage that. And I get to work with so many great practices. One of the things that I always promote if you follow me for any lengthy period of time is email marketing. So today I want to share with you eight ways to improve the effectiveness of email marketing in your weight loss practice. And these are really important principles. It's a great way to grow your practice organically, to stay in touch with your uh, clientele, to be engaged, to make sure that you are in front of them when they are ready to move forward with weight loss, whether it's uh weight loss surgery or medical weight loss or any services that you offer. So we want to be the ones who are in front of them. We want to make sure that we are engaging and building a relationship with them. Because really, if you have connection with your clientele, with your patients, with your potential patients, uh, it's much easier and more likely that they will be converted into a sale, for lack of a better word, to become a patient or to have weight loss surgery with you. So connection is really important and email marketing is a great way to do that. So let's get to the eight ways to improve the effectiveness of email marketing in your weight loss practice. The first one is to, of course, build your list. This is the foundation of this entire marketing strategy is to build your list. So we want to make sure that you have a robust list that's permission based, meaning that they have raised their hand and said, I want to be on your email list um, and that it is uh, it's something that they want to be a part of. So the great way to do this is, first of all, whenever you have new patients coming into your practice, you want to make sure that your team verifies with them and that they get in enrolled or they get put onto your email list. You want to have an easy way for them to access your email list and to sign up for it on your website. Of course, just saying sign up for our e-newsletter is not that engaging at all. They want to know the benefit. What's the benefit? It's going to be tips for uh, healthy eating and tips for uh, long-term weight loss. So you want to make sure that you've got something in there that's enticing, but you want to always be building your list. You can do this, like I mentioned, with patients coming through with every new lead that comes through your website, having the ability for them to check or uncheck the box that says join the e-newsletter um, or whatever you're calling it. So we want to make sure that's on there. We want to make sure that you have other what we call lead magnets or potential great resources out there for people to raise their hand and sign up for, whether it's a recipe book or whether it is your top five tips for how to have weight loss surgery without when you don't have insurance coverage, whether I may have created so many lead magnets. I have them in my own practice, um, my my consulting practice, our weight loss practice, and we get opt-ins. That's what they're called every single day. So we want to make sure we're always building our email list. That's number one. That's the foundation of everything. The second thing is to categorize your contacts if you can. So as they come in, if you offer medical weight loss and surgical weight loss and perhaps any other services, make sure that your list gets segregated so you can set up tags in the background for where they came from, what they're most interested in. And that way you respect the list and you provide them with the information uh, that they want on the topic that they're looking for. So we want to make sure we have our list segregated. That's tip number two. Tip number three is to create a consistent systematized system for email creation and delivery. So it depends on what you're using for your electronic medical record, but you could have a CRM is what we call it oftentimes in marketing, a a customer relationship management system where you actually have them all in there. They're segregated. There's so many different ways to do it. You can deliver your emails with video if that's faster for you, but making sure that someone has responsibility for creating that engaging content that always has the call to action in it, uh, so that you can stay in touch with your clients. I know for us, uh, in our practice, we have um, one of my team members is responsible for those that are going through the weight loss journey. I have another one who is responsible for those going through um, hormone replacement therapy, another one who does the retail. But we we tend to do some that are a blast to everyone on the list if it's applicable to all of them. And then we also do customized content if we're having an event surrounding one of those things or we're having a, some sort of a special or we're having anything to do with that. So we, uh, I, I, I hire, I'm 
purpose, people who do have somewhat of a marketing background, even though they're also maybe clinicians or retail sales managers, that sort of thing. And it just helps that I don't always have the burden of creating that. As a clinician, um, I love now I love creating content. I do it all the time. We're watching some a sort of content here, but then whatever we create, we want to make sure that it gets promoted then to our group. So you want to leverage everything that you do. So and then for me for my consulting business, I always created my own uh, emails. They're very personable. I uh, have also used an outside company to help with some of that to make sure that it's consistently going out. I've tried lots of different things, video versus so anyhow I can go on and on about it. But we want to make sure at the end of the day that you have a consistent way for your emails to go out. That's why in Bariatric Business Accelerator membership, I actually have the content all created for you. All the articles you can pick from, all the recipes that you can pick from, all the different graphics that you can add in. I have templates in there, easy to use, and I help people set it up all the time. So at any rate, there's lots of tech uh, options for you. And um, But anyhow, making sure that's consistently getting done. How often people always think, oh, well, once a month is uh, sufficient. I do not believe once a month is sufficient. I think it should have it, should at least be weekly. So if you're going to get some traction with it, uh, you might do it once a month and you're like, oh, it doesn't do anything for me. I don't care about email marketing. It might be either the content that's in there or how frequently it's being uh, delivered. So we want to do that, I, I'd say, weekly. Uh, after that, the fourth one is to write compelling subject lines. We want to use some of the little emojis. We want to make sure that they are uh, in, not not uh, frivolous or something that's a turn off. We want to make sure it's professional, of course, from the physicians, but we want to make sure it's got something catchy in there. So just like saying your weekly e-newsletter from Dr. Smith is not going to entice people to open it up. You've got to have a little bit of the benefit that's in there. Uh, you know, our top recipe for summer for you know for staying on track in the summer or you know something that's going to grab their attention uh, and you can use ai for that to get your subject lines you can have put a topic in there and ask ai to create some great subject lines for you that'll come up with a ton of them so if you're not doing that it's an easy way to utilize that or like i say you can outsource it so writing compelling subject lines is really important the fifth one is to Keep it simple and direct. Don't make it many, many, many pages. Have a similar format so people know how to find things. Always have a call to action with one thing you want them to do in the newsletter. So if it's a special that you have, if it's referring a friend, if it's a uh, doing a testimonial, whatever it is that you have, perhaps one, a call to action, always have that in there, but make it simple and easy to follow. The sixth one is to optimize your emails for a mobile device and test it. Before I send an email out, I test it on a laptop or on a, a, a desktop or a laptop. And I also always check the emails and what they look like on my phone. Do all the links work? All of that. So you want to optimize it for a mobile device because the majority of people access that on their mobile device nowadays. I'm sure you probably do as well. So we want to make sure it's optimized for that. The seventh one is test and track. Test all your links, test your emails, make sure that they're looking great and track your open rate. What are people clicking on? What are they most interested in? What got the most uh, of what, what, had the most, what call to action was acted upon the most. We want to take note of that and look at our statistics every time the emails go out and the CRMs make it so easy to track that. So we want to make sure that we are testing and tracking. And then the eighth one finally is to definitely stay up to date with deliverability recommendations and requirements. It's changing all the time. If you use a regular CRM, they'll oftentimes guide you through that. You may see it um, elsewhere in terms of requirements for people opting in. Uh, deliverability. There's been a lot of changes with Gmail accounts. There's so many different things. And keep your list fresh. Sometimes people think, oh, I don't want to take anyone off. But if somebody's not been opening your emails, then send them one more saying, hey, this is the last chance. Do you want to stay on? Do you not? And give them that option. Uh, and, and then go through periodically and clean out those that are not being delivered for whatever reason. So anyhow, those are my eight tips for making the most of your email marketing. I've also written an entire blog on this for Robard. So we'll put the link to that in uh, the notes here. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you're not a part of my e-newsletter, then please join weightlosspracticebuilder.com right up at the top. Uh, you can click there and it'll get you to uh, the subscribe button so you can subscribe easy. So anyhow, always uh, ha I have helpful tips, uh, things that will always benefit you, easy to digest, uh, and I hope you enjoy that. This is a little bit longer. You know, I try to keep these 
uh, podcast very uh, digestible too, so shorter because that tends to be easier for practitioners. Uh, but there was so much great information. You know, I love email marketing, so I had to do it. So anyhow, reach out to me, Carol, K-A-R-O-L at weightlosspracticebuilder.com if I can help in any way. Take care.